Hey everybody! Whimsical Quest is described as a retro action roguelite adventure, released on December 3rd, 2018 by one-man developer Stealthy Golem, and given to me through the Steam Curator program. And I honestly feel really bad that it took me this long to get to it, because it's actually super charming. So let's do it some justice. If you don't know what retro action roguelite adventure, or rara means, I'd like to compare it to games like Nuclear Throne, most closely, or maybe Binding of Isaac, in a very loose sense. The essential idea is that each play session is a standalone run, moving through the game's randomized stages until the final boss, getting stronger and stronger all the way through stat boosts and upgrades, and if you die before the end, game over. This is a pretty popular form of game, especially for indie devs, because it provides potentially hours and hours of gameplay in a crisp, compact package. As long as the combat and pacing are solid, you have a game that basically never gets old. Whether or not Whimsical Quest is quite that level of rah-rah, I'm just gonna keep calling that, I'm sorry, it's, <laughs> it's really good, will have to be explored. Oh right, that's, uh, that's my job. Starting your first game of Whimsical Quest, you get the choice of one character, the peasant, who gets a really quite lovely block of text about him. <clears throat> Being a peasant is tough. Other non-peasant people often think peasants are atrocious, nasty, immoral, poor, vile, dreadful, wretched, unpleasant, sad, loathsome, ghastly, mean, repulsive, awful, inadequate, shameful, and objectionable. But you think you look quite good in brown. So that should just about set the tone of the game, right? The peasant is the easiest, in my opinion, of the five characters, armed with a simple spin attack, a ranged attack with a stun on a short cooldown, a damage slash self heal spell in the form of a, a farmer's market, and a long cooldown mass fireball spell. This is particularly special because the peasant does a good job setting you up for what to expect, while also being gentle on new players. The peasant's self heal is by far the most powerful in the game. In fact, only the shepherd character, sorry, the uh, flock man, actually gets a heal spell. There are ways to heal in-game separate from character abilities, but easy access to one is a valuable resource. But not to make it too easy, the peasant's ranged attack, which you'll be wanting to use quite a lot, can take some getting used to. Hitting the button to activate it takes away your ability to move, instead assigning those buttons to moving your targeting reticle. This feels clunky because, well, it is, to balance out the fact that it's really good. Using it is a risk, and taking too long to aim it, because you only get the stun effect if you hit a monster directly, is an active gamble, knowing that you're making yourself vulnerable to damage. It's a good introduction to the combat system overall, giving you the supplies to deal with your first meeting with the various monsters and bosses, while making sure you don't get too complacent before the difficult characters come out. Which doesn't take long. Characters, along with things like different shops and permanent stat upgrades, are all unlocked with bits, which you accumulate through play and get to keep after you die. After one play session on Jittery, that is, the medium difficulty, I had enough bits to buy every character. And maybe I'm just, you know, really good at roguelikes, but that seems pretty generous. And all of the characters play differently from each other in significant ways, from their attacks being, I'm going to do this and if you get hit it's your own fault, to managing resources for two different attacks as if you're playing World of Warcraft, or my personal favorite, the repertoire of Jauntlet. Jauntlet will raise havoc with the ancient powers of the warrior, the Valkyrie, the wizard, and the... the... elf. Whichever direction you're facing determines what Jauntlet's attack is. His, er, their attacks are actually quite simple, being just this, the ability to do all of it at once, and a screen-wide damage effect, essentially giving you the brutally simple experience of playing Gauntlet while also making jokes about Gauntlet. But enough about the characters. The maps are full of enemies, chests, breakable pots, and sometimes POWs, I mean, uh, critters, which will follow you around and deal damage to anything that touches them. They're not the most effective damage boost, but they're awfully cute. Howdy. Every map also has a computer terminal in it, which is how you open the exit to the next map. The computer terminal gives you three button sequences to complete in a row, and every completed prompt spawns enemies. But you're also timed, so you can't spend all your time killing the enemies. You can only thin their numbers and attempt to distract or hold them off long enough so that you can do the next sequence. Take too long, and the current map is far more dangerous for the rest of the time you're there. It's not super punishing. If you wait until the end of the level, your risk is pretty minimal, since even if you do trigger the alarm, you can hightail it to the exit no problem. If you're trying to go quickly, however, perhaps for an achievement, this is just the appropriate level of challenge, between finding the terminal, completing its gauntlet, and finding the exit. Going quickly, of course, also runs the risk of missing out on power-ups. There are a ton of these, some more useful than others, but most important are the usable items. These are like Binding of Isaac's spacebar items. Powerful activated abilities with long enough cooldowns to not be used too often, 
examples being placing your own turret, summoning a horde of attackers, or creating a black hole. Whimsical Quest doesn't have the same variety in character builds that other roguelikes, such as Isaac, do. Your character is more or less going to play the same for the whole run, but the activated abilities do give it a little bit of spice. And I personally find it refreshing to have characters that behave noticeably different, because it means you can go in for a specific play experience on purpose, something which is difficult to do in Isaac and more or less moot in Nuclear Throne. The way Whimsical Quest handles difficulty is also interesting, because there is definitely a steep change between the first playthrough and the second, and the second and the third, Whimsical Quest version of New Game Plus. But there's also the opportunity to buy those things I talked about before, like permanent stat upgrades. This means that, in theory, if you're stuck on a playthrough, if you play enough, you should be able to muscle through. As an anti-frustration feature, it is an interesting one. As for what Whimsical Quest does poorly or could do better, I do want to stress that for each individual character themselves, the runs aren't going to be terribly different. So if you like the game as it plays, you're going to get that every time, ramping up in difficulty as you play more, but you're also probably not going to be surprised. And really, that just boils down to what kind of game you're looking for. The boss battles also aren't terribly unique. If you can beat one, you're probably going to be just fine on the others, and as I write this script, trying to remember off the top of my head what attack patterns which bosses have is pretty difficult. Notably, the second to last boss, oh god, is maybe the easiest of them all, pattern-wise. And that's a shame. Level layouts can start to feel familiar over time as well, and the variety of enemies is smaller than some similar games, but not, I think, to really a bad extent. It's respectable for the size of the game, but oh man, if I can't bring up any negative points they're going to take my reviewer's license away. Help, I'm a hostage in the industry, help! In conclusion, Whimsical Quest is an honestly fantastic game. Not even as a one-man indie game, but as any size of indie game. The retro art is charming, the music speaks for itself, the gameplay is solid, and if you like what you see, you'll probably get several hours fun out of it regardless of skill level. This gem of Steam has, as of recording this, no user reviews, and it's my hope that this review of mine can change that. I'll be putting mine up, and I hope to soon see what everybody else thinks as well. Not because I get paid for it, because I don't, but because I want to see more games by Stealthy Golem. Me. I want to play them. <laughs> Whimsical Quest is $3. Go pick it up, let the dev know what you think of his game, let me know what you thought of this review in the comments, and if you're interested in more of my reviews, here they are. And if retro is your thing, my show Nostalgia Trip might interest you too. Thanks for watching, and happy gaming. All we hear is Radio Ra Ra, Radio Ru Ru, Radio Ra Ra. <laughs>